It's Ricker. It's Bond. Got a lot, so much to talk about, and we're glad we're potting hard today. It's a juicy, filthy episode. We're going to start with some open AI news. Finally, Sam Altman let advanced voice chat out of the bag after six months of just fucking um, edging us, edging us, edging us straight. But he finally let us know. So here we are with a, a full comprehensive review. Marky Zuck and Metter is coming for the jugular of Apple with some new glasses. And then at the end, Mr. Elon Starlink is giving some free, sounds freaking socialist, dude, free internet to United Airlines and perhaps some French airlines. You will hear all that, plus just more yapping from two dudes on the internet on this episode of Ricker and Bond. It's going to be great. Stay with us. ChatGPT has some voice. How does it work? How does it sound? And what voice did you pick? I'll tell you what voice I picked, even though I don't have it. Um, I don't know how it works. <laughs> um, it's magic. Okay, um, so no. tell me about it. I have no idea what it is. Oh, wait, do I have it? Oh, I do. Cool. Yeah. If you are a ChatGBT Plus subscriber, it is rolling out on the app, on the mobile app, maybe the desktop um, this week. By now, probably have it so what is it um chat gpt it's basically chat gpt but you're talking to it um this feature was previously available but it kind of sucked regular voice mode was a little bit slow still way better than siri but um when open ai announced this like six seven eight months ago they were saying that the responses here are going to be way faster like talking to a human or like talking to um your phone on the movie her and so far um it still sounds like chat gpt in terms of knowledge um but it is faster so i don't know what they do to like it seems like it doesn't really have to think anymore like you talk you stop talking and then it just like immediately answers you um also another thing you can interrupt it you can be like yo hey shut up let's talk about this now and It'll, it it kind of sounds like you're talking to someone on the phone. We're going get, to get a quick demo going. It's, it's loading. Yo, 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 what up? Hey there, not much. Not much, just doing the pod. What you doing tonight? It's cutting out. Hey, man, I'm going to... It's cutting out. Because it sounds like... From your Oops. Sounds like we had a little hiccup there. Uh, you I'm were saying that actually unfortunate. That that uh, distance is good. Do that. Oh. Yo 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 yo! What up? Hey, not much. Just here to chat. What's up with you? Hey, listen. I need you to make me a table of every. Uh, maybe the top 10 celebrities that were associated with Diddy in from 1995 to 2007. And I want you to organize them by age and then maybe a short little blurb about how they are most known for being affiliated with them. Please. Thank you. I can give you a brief rundown of some celebs associated with Diddy, but I can't create a table here. Let's take a look. Number one. Notorious B.I.G. Biggie Smalls. Hey, I'm going to stop you right there. Who killed Tupac? The mystery of who killed Tupac Shakur remains unsolved. There are many theories and speculations. Hey, I'm going to stop you right there. Evidence has been hey, found. shut up. How much does a camel weigh? A fully grown camel typically weighs between 880 to 1,320 pounds, depending on the species. Hey, shut up. Who are we talking about before, at the beginning of this conversation? We were just catching up, and you mentioned you were working on the pod. Then you asked what I was doing tonight. What's up with the podcast? Uh, nothing. Okay, shut the fuck up. Love you. So, All say right. hello Take care. to advanced voice mode, natural conversations, senses and response, interruptions, humor, and more. Multiple Voices offers an expanding set of voices to choose from. Personalized, you can use memory and custom instructions to shape responses. You're in control. Audio recordings are saved. 
and you can delete them at any time. Learn how to manage recordings by clicking the link on my phone and not on yours. Right. We're in control. <laughs> <laughs> Wink. Choice, I believe I, I clicked so... Okay, so I didn't see this. Uh, we'll, we'll go through a few of them, but uh, there's a an interface where you can swipe uh, and there's a circle with a blue calming thing and can I hear what these people say? Uh, hey, I'm ready to hit the ground running. So if there's anything you'd like me to focus on first, just let me know. That's Ember. Hello, it's lovely to meet you. If there's anything you need, please don't hesitate to let me know. That's I'm here to help. Vale, I was about to choose Vale. Hey there, I've got a really great feeling about us teaming up. How Ju can I jump in and help? Juniper didn't like. Hey, what's up? Feel free to ask me about anything that's on your mind. I'm ready. That's to Scarlett Johansson. That's my girl, right? Is it actually? Or the fake one? No. Yeah, that's the fake one, I think. Yeah, I, I chose her. Not to too many genders, but uh, uh, the name is Soul. I could have swore in the demonstration you could also use the camera mm -hmm. and be like, hey, look at this. What's going on here? And it would, like, do that. You know, multimodal, if you will. Um, where's that, Sam? I basically I used the voice mode to like have a conversation. Uh, I was like practicing for something, and I wanted it to practice with me, and I, it was pretty useful. I don't know how different this one would be. I'll try it at a later date and let everybody know. But uh, it's certainly a product that either. It's probably existed, but different than anything I've used before. Um, hey, uh, I am divorcing my wife. I want you to pretend to be my six-year-old daughter and my eight-year-old son, and I'm going to go ahead and have a talk with you right now. Yeah. I'm really sorry to hear about what you're going through. Mm -hmm. While I can help you think through how to have this conversation... What? It's important to have this discussion directly with your children in a way that feels right for you. What family. a cop out. Okay. It, I would also love a, like a two X speed. <laughs> it's pretty slow. That would be cool. Um, it just, just giving you like all the information in the world. I guess that's not good enough, right? <laughs> so it has to be faster. Hey, what's going um, on? So I'm doing a pod right now. Um, can you just be a guest as OpenAI and, you know, really just bring something to the table here to bring some value to our shareholders? Absolutely. As OpenAI, I'm here to bring value by providing cutting-edge AI technology that can be leveraged in... Yeah, can you, if I, can you ask, like, be, <laughs> be an interesting podcast guest? Hey, don't cut her off. Let's dive into some exciting topics. Let's do it. We could AI just the latest AI. thing that's happening this week, Sol. Well, while I can't share real-time updates... Why? Why? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't share real-time updates? What are you talking about? Do you know how many people are just about to start an AI pod? That's crazy. I mean, <laughs> so low-key, high-key, this... Oh, you mean like t with a with a AI guest host? Well, yeah, human talking to a, a guest. But I think, I think, did you send me... Uh, or I downloaded a content of someone who uh, was doing a TED talk. Yeah. He's like, "I'm a I'm a music manager. Who do I manage? An AI person on the internet." So, oh god, a bunch of those. And I'm, I'm, there was also a headline of a bunch of people making money off of AI music already. So presumably, this uses ChatGPT's product called Whisper, which is an API that lets you have AI voices on your um, products um one really cool thing use case i've seen it used for is um what's that app called duolingo they have this new feature where you can like video call one of their characters and practice the language and it uses an ai voice to like talk to you oh, that's awesome so yeah it's pretty cool i haven't tried it because it costs money but i saw it and i was like oh this is definitely using open ai's api or Amazon's, or fucking Lamb, uh, fucking Facebooks, like whatever. Oh, There's well. so many. Hey, great. But story. um, unless you got something else, do you want to talk about Meta's thing? What were you about to say? Uh, yeah, we can talk about that in a second. What was I gonna say? <laughs> but um, before we do that, uh, I just thought of some more OpenAI news. Kind of a big deal. Chief Technology Officer forgot her name. Myra something just stepped down. 
Lovely looking. What does she know? (laughs) (laughs) What does she know? What has she seen? uh, She's either just about to get the bag, do somewhere else, but uh, yeah, she she's gone ski. Or was Sam like, "I need you out. This is my rodeo now, Bucko." Seems like there's a lot of executive turnover in this little company. Yeah. Um, Only 49% owned by Microsoft. Only? Oh, really crazy. Really more. It's still really crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I like to call it Microsoft AI because it certainly ain't open. That's open, for sure. <laughs> open AI CTO Mira Murati says, I don't think she's Latina at all. I don't know her ethnicity. So she's, leaving she's like Israeli, maybe. The company. <laughs> uh, Wikipedia says she's Albanian, which is like a Christian, but European. Uh, she's only 35 years old. She's from Vlore, South, Southern Albania, Albania. She went to Colby College, which I think is. Colby uh, College, go Cobes. Go, go Cobes, dude. No, I thought it was a music school in Los Angeles. Uh, also went to Dartmouth, uh, known for ChatGPT, Dolly, GPT-4, AI. Employer was OpenAI. She's an honorary doctor of science. Olympia. You think she's struggling to get a new job? No, I think she's <laughs> get, the, get a bag. Uh, briefly worked at Zodiac Aerospace in before joining <laughs> an electric car company Tesla in 2013, where she was a product manager on the Model X. Hmm. So she's 35, and she was a product manager in 2013. So she was a product manager at 24 at Tesla. Yeah. Wow. What so I was doing at 24? <laughs> what? Uh, Music? Living with you. Hey, come on now. There's nothing better than that. So, that was great. It was good. OpenAI CTO, Chief Technology Officer, for those that don't know what that is, said she's leaving the company. She's stepping away to do her own exploration after more than six years at the AI startup. She said, after much reflection, I have made the difficult decision to leave OpenAI. Open AI. There's nipple, never an ideal time to step away from a place one cherishes. Yet this moment feels right, right at the top. My six and a half years with OpenAI team have been an extraordinary privilege. Altman said some stuff. He said, I replied with this. Mira, thank you for everything. Yada, yada, yada. How much After privately she- scolding her. <laughs> Saying, uh, you want it to be freaking for the world or do you want to make money, Mira? <laughs> God damn it. Let's print some fucking cash, bitch. It's much for me. <laughs> damn. That's wild. I knew Tesla freaking washed your brain. You're soft, Mira. You're mine, Mira. You want it to be Wait. good for the world or do you want to be good for your pockets, Mira? You want to go back to your family in Albania? Mira, we have a bunker. We'll be fine. Let's fuck everyone else. We're going to Gates Point. Diddy's coming. He's safe there. We're going to Idaho, Mira. Uh, she Marathi's saw the future and she wanted no part of it. <laughs> Marathi's decision to step down comes as opening eyes said to be pursuing a funding round. Uh, this is kind of old news. That would value the company at over $150 billion, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Apple, and Thrive Capital, the good old boy. RP reportedly in talks to invest the round could end up as large as six point five billion dollars, says Bloomberg. Apparently, says TechCrunch.com, our homies over there, says OpenAI desperately needs the money, according to the information. So this is a publication referencing a publication being referenced by a podcast. The company has spent approximately seven billion dollars on model training and one point five billion on staffing. At one point in time, ChatGPT alone was said to be costing OpenAI $700 million a day to run. Altman has said the training the company's once flagship GPT-4 model cost over $100 million. Sounds like what everybody knows all too well, a startup overhiring and overspending. Overspending? You just said they spent seven billion on AI, and they're about to be worth one hundred and fifty billion. They're underspending. <laughs> <laughs> but this, That's so- I can't think that fast enough for this the, the publication that says it desperately needs the money. Well, it doesn't sound like it desperately needs the money. <laughs> sounds like, 
Sounds like uh, unless, it's funded by the biggest companies on earth. Yeah, unless I'm missing something. I don't think they have a, a, a trouble fucking raising funds. Um, no, that's fucking crazy. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of fucking money. It is. Um, Interesting step down of a pretty coveted place in a coveted company. Probably one of the highest class private companies in the market. Did you see Sam Altman say he didn't care how much money they spent? They're going to keep burning cash until they achieve AGI, whatever that means. This is AGI. Uh, AGI meaning like, like it's 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 sentient pretty much. They're, they're just um, going hard until they can ask it to how to make money. Isn't that what they said they would do? They were going to go hard until they said, how can we make no. money? Yeah, until they know, until they can ask the AI, hey, how do we make up all the money we just spent over the past 10 years? Oh, shit. I don't know. Maybe. I feel like they can ask it that now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like it's pretty good. I make it a business plan. It'll probably just say, just keep spending until <laughs> fucking, uh, I don't know, like you make the money back because like these companies are paying them a lot, especially, uh, well, not really Apple, because apparently Apple's getting their stuff for free. But a lot of companies are paying them to fucking use that API, that juice, that sweet, sweet nectar that is AI. You can put it in anything. It's like fucking, um, it's like sweet honey that just makes you smart or makes your app smarter. I do wonder what their smarter business endgame might be in a, in a brief. If, it could ha- if I could have a, a, brief, a brief slide. A little deck there, Altman, if you could send that to my email to see uh my guess is I have more of a prediction for Microsoft more than mm-hmm. open AI. I think. think that Microsoft is like, yo, we wanna own all the data centers or as many as much compute power as we can, and then we also wanna own the juicy, juicy AI software on top of it, and we wanna lease that to every industry that we can healthcare fucking entertainment fucking finance fucking like we are going to be the oil we're going to own the oil and we're going to own the gas station you know like and google's trying to do the exact same thing and so is facebook and so is amazon and right now nvidia is just like acting as the fucking warehouse until all these companies make their own chips you still think that <coughs> data that people are putting into OpenAI is the most valuable asset? No, I think it's the compute power that's the most valuable asset. The hardware that powers it. I think the data is the second most. We should do a, an episode on quantum eventually. But mm-hmm. see, I'm seeing the headlines percolate. It's always been percolating a little bit, but I'm I'm seeing a little Bloomberg documentaries about quantum computing. Yeah, well, you know, they've been trying to get that to fucking be cost effective for like two, three decades. So perhaps it's maybe just, maybe AI can figure out how to do that. Kind of what I'm saying. At least more of the compute power, as you said, but maybe that's the foundation being laid. Yeah, it's fucking nuts, dude. AI is cool. Um, any other open AI news? Um. No, I guess we can go straight into a little meta, speaking of AI. Meta. The boy Zuckerberg and company are just really punching Apple in the stomach over and over. Maybe not over and over, but it's getting jabs in, dude. They're getting jabs. I would say they're kind of like, 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 think of like you're running and there's a, like a fucking chihuahua that keeps nibbling at your feet and like... You can like kick it and shit, but it just keeps coming. It just keeps coming. <laughs> and you can't outrun it because dogs are faster than humans. So it's just always there. And yeah, really I don't know. Head headstrong chihuahua that won't die. Yeah. Fucking Meta had a recent or yesterday, yesterday had an event where they pretty much talked about all hardware, no software that I can recall. Um so we got a new Oculus, is that what it's called? Three? What is it? The fucking Meta's headset. Um, 
not familiar, not familiar. I know what it's called, but MetaQuest Pro. There we go. Premium Mixed Reality. It is a cheaper version of their other MetaQuest 3. Uh, this one's called the MetaQuest 3S, and it's only $299, which is outrageous for a like a, a quality headset. I'm using quality with air quotes because I've never tried it. And like compared to the Vision Pro, like everything is trash, but the Vision Pro is so like it's the price of a used car. So I'm not sure how many people will be trying that out. Um three thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars is the Vision Pro from Apple. Four thousand with fucking taxes. <laughs> so um uh, four ninety nine or two ninety nine versus four thousand. So it seems like the like obviously um Zuck is still going hard. With the metaverse stuff. Um, and he is actually impressing me because two ninety nine is a really crazy price point. Like it's cheap enough for me to be like, okay, maybe I'll just grab one and see like what the big deal is, you know. What I would use it for probably is fucking um the pass through fucking windows floating around and shit in augmented reality. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably way worse than uh than the Vision Pro, but for two ninety nine, you can't really go wrong. Um, they announced a new way of interacting with the with the Quest, which is a, a wristband that reads the fucking. I assume it just reads like your the things that move your fingers or some shit, like the gestures. The muscles there, and then it sends it as inputs to the display on your face, so that you can have more control. That was probably their way of saving money in terms of sensors by not having the the full um, fucking hand control. Um, I think they said there's cameras that look at your eyes with eye tracking, which is very uh, surprising because that sounds expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't have a Vision Pro, but I've tried it out, and it was pretty impressive. So if I get my hands on this, I'll definitely do a review. Um, interesting. Interesting. So, yeah, they're going hard. How cheap do they do you think they can get this thing? Because this is cheaper than their Ray-Ban glasses. Or, no, it's the same price, actually. Uh, I don't know. Uh, That's fucking crazy. Pretty freaking cheap. That's fucking nuts. I'm also not sure how big their app library is on this platform, but it's probably a decent size. They're also um, it, with their own AR glasses that are not Snap glasses. Um, I'm not sure what the business relationship with Snap and Meta is. Is it like... I don't know, think there is Snap, one. Yeah, with Snap glasses, it's it, there's a Meta. It's like Meta and Snap, but... I'm just not sure what the, the commingling is. Maybe I'm wrong. They made. Oh, I, I did. I I think you might be wrong. Um, they did. Speaking of Snap, they did just release a new, or they announced a new AR version of Spectacles. Snap, not at all. Which with Meta? No, they are competitors. Um, Why did I Facebook think? tried to buy Snap back in the day, but they were unsuccessful. Oh, I'm thinking of Ray Ban, huh? Yes, you're thinking of Ray-Ban. Um, so, yeah, well, we're going to talk about both of these because these new spectacles are actually pretty interesting. So Facebook and um, Facebook and Snap both released AR goggles or AR glasses, and we're getting close to the vision that Mark Zuckerberg was talking about with, like, just beautiful AR in a beautiful form factor. Right now it's not beautiful. Um, for either one, um, the spectacles for well, it itself or the interface, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Um, the demo that Mark gave on stage with his clunky ass nerd glasses looked like hot shit, but still impressive. The fact that all that compute was happening in glasses that weren't plugged in, and Ooh. also not that big. When I was walking around LA, I was about to text you. I was like, man, I would definitely buy some Snap or Ray-Bans or Meta glasses if I'm, like, traveling to somewhere. Probably not mm-hmm. for every day, especially if you, like, can't be outside and stuff, taking notes or whatever. But 
they're going through a new city and you're like directions first of all but looking at buildings and stuff a little wikipedia page popping up next to buildings that's quite fun directions notifications yeah. weather yeah so i have the fucking ray-ban glasses and they're not ar but they're fucking ai so it just like talks in your ear and shit and you can talk to it ask it questions it's a little slow but they're like pretty good quality glasses and the camera quality is like actually way better than i expected um but yeah no these spectacles i'm looking for a price here it doesn't i don't even think that uh consumers can get these new snapchat ar glasses i think they're just for developers to use it and build things yeah. um how uh snapchat has enough money to buy the, the uh, to build these is beyond me but i know um facebook or meta has the money so meta built their own um and they said they weren't going to release theirs as well it's just for internal use and development um gotta say i respect meta that they are one of the few companies that announces something and literally just is upfront and says hey we're not gonna release these don't fucking wait around for them because they're not coming out anytime soon we just wanted to show you Whereas everyone else, cough, cough, Apple will fucking announce something. And then on day one, it's just like not out yet. Or they'll say it's coming soon. Snap is 99 bucks uh, for developers who use the product. 99 bucks a month. Um, oh, a month? I was going to say, damn, I'm getting some right now. The fuck? For Snap. Uh, and I think Orion, which is the meta AR glasses, are a similar price point. Um, or they're at least only giving it to developers, right? Anyway. Yeah. This is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for Apple to make a product called the App in, Apple Visions, not the Pros, that are just glasses, just AR, high quality, fucking make them beautiful, and enter that market. Because I think that market is going to be bigger than virtual reality. Um, just like just Apple watch functionality on your face, you yeah. know, maybe make them like thousand bucks or something, maybe a little cheaper. It'd probably be a little more expensive than the iPhone. Um, do the same thing that fucking um, meta did with the glasses being charged with the case and you charge the case. Cause that's fucking genius. AirPod wise. AirPod wise. Yeah. So like, if Apple can do that, that'd be great. I already know they're working on a lower tier version, supposedly, of the Apple Vision Pro that has like less sensors because like a lot of people aren't buying it. Um so yeah, I don't know. We will see. These metaverse things are coming out, and then you like fucking get some AI in that bitch. Like, ooh, dude, like Ray-Ban Meta, by the way, is powered by a Qualcomm chip. Which, uh, interesting google are also working on smart glasses according to qualcomm ceo san diego Damn. company um you want to hit the starlink for like two minutes and let's then, do it basically start let's... just giving free wide to five people air france and also united airlines um, Air France has signed with a deal with Mr. Musk's company to provide in-flight Wi-Fi, joining other airlines like United and Hawaiian. Uh, Air France will be equipping its aircraft with Starlink's tech starting next summer, still offering service of what they're doing already. Deals also signed by Qatar Airways, Air New Zealand, JSX. United Airlines partnership with Starlink will equip over 1,000 planes with high-speed internet by next year, nearly doubling Starlink's in-flight Wi-Fi orders. Hawaiian Airlines offers free Starlink on Airbus flights between Hawaii and the U.S., Asia, Oceania. Starlink Aviation, launched in 2022, now serves around 100 countries with its 6,300 satellites in orbit. So a lot of airlines using Starlink as Wi-Fi provider in the sky. Apparently, most of... SpaceX's revenue comes from Starlink. It, it would yeah. There's a lot of people using it. I'm starting to 
you know, like sometimes Elon Musk will say something on X. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Like, what is this, what the fuck is this guy doing, dude? Hard. And then, like, I think of Starlink. And yeah. I think of, like, oh, dude, that's fucking genius. Because airplane Wi Fi sucks ass. I don't know if you've ever used it before, but it's the worst wi- internet experience anyone can have ever. And apparently, Starlink is like this quality, but on an airplane, yeah. you know? And I can't think of a handful, I can't think of a lot of companies that would be able to char- challenge him on this. Because fucking he owns the majority of the satellites in low Earth orbit, apparently. Also crazy. So, yeah, how the fuck are you going to fucking, like, buy a bunch of satellites and, like, really? compete with Starlink? <laughs> yeah, the, the deepest mode. Like, deeper than iCloud. <laughs> like, <laughs> iCloud's pretty deep. So <laughs> Owning um, the internet. Just owning space. He so, but, but he might try to, like, commoditize it, like... Which was supposed to be the thing with EVs. And just like, I don't know how. Like, what do you mean? Like, rent out the satellites to other companies to right, fight for? Like, becomes where uh, a, a service where somehow other people can do it for similar prices. And so then the whole space becomes like internet or EVs where it's just not as competitive or it's competitive so much so that everybody has lower prices. And the moat that used to be with like Tesla perhaps is now not seen goes forward and everybody else does evs i don't know how you would commoditize this well because it's just too expensive when i was saying the internet i was like now the internet is not the most lucrative business to like own infrastructure unless you own the the wires but i don't know how oh i see what you're saying so like at&t yeah. owns like a bunch of towers yeah. so like maybe there could be a thing where like because you could make like a fucking mint mobile and just use at&t towers Maybe you could make like a fucking your own space internet company and just rent Starlink satellites yeah. for that. But you'll always be paying fucking Musk at the end of the day. Yes, yes, yes. I'm trying to find a number on fucking percentage, but yeah, what you said pretty much said it. We can do a little Starlink deep dive next episode. Starlink. All right, broski. I get Starlink. <laughs> you want to call Low it? Key. Yeah, we can call it. Wonderful. 549 bucks. I want to go work out. Thanks, everybody, for listening. You heard everything you needed to hear about OpenAI and also the other thing we talked about, which was meta. <laughs> Had to look. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Work out. LA Fitness, I'm there. Let's go.